Welcome back to our session on information theoretic estimators and the use of those in the JDT toolkit. In this short video, we're going to look at uh, making these uh, estimates of information theoretic measures using a Gaussian model. What I mean by that is that these estimators assume the, Gauss, the, the data is Gaussian distributed. It's easy to understand what a uh, Gaussian distributed single variable looks like. We know that the probability density function for a univariate Gaussian looks something like this with a mean zero and standard deviation one. For a multivariate, uh, for, for a multivariate x, say of d dimensions, uh, we're going to generalize that to a, uh, a multivariate Gaussian distribution. We can look at that, for example, looking at samples drawn from a multivariate Gaussian distribution here, a two-dimensional Gaussian distribution where the variables have a covariance of 0.5. We can see there that each variable, if we look at the marginal uh, probability density function, they're going to have a univariate Gaussian distribution themselves, but when we put those together with the right covariance, we get, uh, we get the multivariate Gaussian distribution where we can see the density is concentrated in the middle and tails out towards uh, the edges of each univariate. So when we model our data in this way as having a, a, a Gaussian distribution, we have the analytic result that the uh, entropy of this multivariate has this specific analytic form. This is given in Nats. As I said before, we're generally taking our logs in natural units. And here, omega x is uh, the covariance matrix of the multivariate, and we take the determinant of that. Okay, so it's a simple analytic distribution. All we've got to do is compute the covariance between our variables, and we can straight away compute the entropy. We can then generalize this to take any other measure as a sum and difference of these multivariate entropies. For example, the mutual information would be computed as a uh, sum of the marginal entropies minus the joint entropy. Now, importantly, we need to understand this assumes there is linear coupling between our Gaussian variables, okay? That's why they will have a multivariate Gaussian distribution while each of them has their own univariate Gaussian distribution. Estimating the entropy in this way will only detect the linear component of the interaction. This is important. When we compute mutual information values with this model, it's going to give us a lower bound on the mutual information if the data were not Gaussian. If the data was Gaussian and we can estimate the covariances perfectly, then obviously the answer is exact. If the data are not Gaussian, it's going to give us a lower bound. We can look at a couple of simplifications of the theoretical result here. For example, for a univariate x with a standard deviation sigma, we can write down the entropy in this way. For univariates x and y, we can compute uh, the mutual information when they have a correlation rho uh, using this formula here. Okay. Now what's interesting here is that the mutual information for a given correlation rho will be the same as the mutual information for a correlation minus rho. This is an interesting point. Uh, it shows us again how information theory is semantic free. We can predict x from y just as well whether they're positively correlated or negatively correlated with the same value. The information theoretic relationship is exactly the same. Now, when we want to compute our information theoretic measures using this Gaussian model assumption, there are pros and cons as with every estimator. The biggest pro is it's really fast. We can do this uh, linearly in the data size. So as the amount of data grows, the difficulty grows only linearly, which is fantastic. It's also parameter free. On the downside, on the downside, it's only computing uh, the information in the linear component of the interaction and giving us a lower bound. It's not picking up all the nonlinear components of the interaction. Okay, and our Gaussian model may be way off. Again, there are ways to test for that, obviously, but in general, we know it's not capturing everything. However, it's a nice, easy one to start with. And I recommend if you're using continuous data, this is a good place to start and then move on to your more complicated estimators after that. So to use the Gaussian model in the JDT software is very easy. All we do is we select Gaussian from the estimator type drop-down box, and there are no special parameters to set for this estimator, which makes it nice and easy. 
Let's run a sample calculation on continuous data. So we'll go in and we're going to use the two coupled random coals uh, sample data set. So let's go to grab our uh, auto analyzer GUI. Again, I've still got it open from the previous video. Now we're going to switch over, as I said, to the Gaussian estimator. And we can see, yes, it's parameter free. The only property value here is the time difference, which we've already seen for, uh, which we've already seen for um, the discrete valued mutual information, but we're going to leave that as zero here for the moment. We'll go and we'll select our uh, one of the two coupled random coals data set from those packaged with JADT, which has been validated here. We're going to compute the mutual information from source zero to destination one. Okay, let's compute the result. And we get a result of 0 0.0219 NAT, which appears consistent with zero. Again, we'll investigate what I mean by consistent with zero in a later session. So coming back to the slides, we've clicked compute. We got this result 0 0.0219 NAT. Fantastic. I've already shown you hopper, hovering on the property name for, uh, for the, the time difference. And now we're suggesting the exercise to, uh, uh, to set a different time difference because this particular data set uh, was, compute, was generated for Gaussian variables coupled with a source target delay of one. So we're now going to set the time difference to one and compute it again. Let's have a look. So we'll come in, we'll set our time difference to one and we'll compute our result again. And this time we see a result of 0.37 nats, which is obviously a much stronger relationship than we saw between the variables at the same time step. When we look at that lag, we see the real relationship from the source to the target. As we saw before with the uh, discrete value calculators, we get our code generator here for us in Java, Python, and MATLAB as well. We won't go through that right now. However, we will do that. We will do that in the next short video coming up.